On the day that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered Mecca. Yawm al on the day in which the conquest of Mecca occurred. He entered Mecca and he approached the Kaaba. And after destroying all of the idols in the Kaaba, and as the thousands of Muslims were surrounding him, he looked among his companions. And he was looking for one individual. And so he asked, where is Bilal? This is among the notables and the leaders of Quraysh. And among even the best of the companions, Abu Bakr and Umar and the others. He's looking for one individual, Bilal radiallahu an. He asked, where is Bilal? And so Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw Bilal and he said, Oh Bilal, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is looking for you. And so Bilal approached in front of all of the other companions and went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh Bilal, come with me. Come with me as I go inside of the Kaaba to be the first to pray in it. I want you to be with me, to pray with me inside of the Kaaba before anyone else. Why? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that I saw you, O Bilal, on the day when you were tortured and no one else was tortured for Islam besides you. And so it was because of his sacrifice to Islam that elevated him to be and to receive this honor that none of the other companions had the privilege of. But it didn't end there. After they came out, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told Bilal to get up and climb the Kaaba and to give the Adhan from on top of the Kaaba. And so he climbed on top of the shoulders of Abu Bakr and Umar, the best of the companions to call the Adhan from on top of the Kaaba. My dear brothers and sisters, this privilege and this honor that Bilal radiallahu anhu received being an ex-slave and an African had nothing to do with the color of his skin or his ethnic background or where he came from or how he looked but rather it was because of his Iman and his Taqwa that translated into sacrifice and into action and so what raises certain people over others is nothing but that. My dear brothers and sisters, it is this that elevated certain people over others. What is it 
that caused the likes of Bilal and Suhaib and Salman al-Farisi to become elevated over the likes of Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab. My dear brothers and sisters, Islam came 1400 years ago to basically abolish and get rid of racism. To get rid of this concept of one race feeling that it has superiority over others. It came to abolish tribalism that was rampant among the Arabs. And it came to abolish ideologies like nationalism. And so this worked for centuries. Read Islamic history and you will find how Islam raised individuals to become leaders in society, to become scholars, to become educators in all walks and fields of life. And yet they came from all different ethnic backgrounds. What elevated them is nothing but this deed. And what caused others who felt that they were superior to become inferior in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was nothing but this deed. And so this continued on for centuries. And it lasted for centuries. And this is why if you were to look across the Muslim world, what do you find? That Muslims don't come from one particular race or ethnic background or speak one language, but rather the majority of Muslims around the world come from non-Arab backgrounds. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the reality of Islam. It came to abolish racism in a time when today racism is becoming rampant, not at the individual level, but at the state level.